Welcome back to another episode of Unemployed AF Dad. Yeah, good morning. How are you? You know, happy new year. Happy new year. Oh, almost new year. <laughs> well, by the time this drops, it will be new. It will be well into the new oh, year. Oh, that's true. That's true. Hope everybody had a, a good holiday season. And if you're into New Year's resolutions and goals and that type of thing, I hope you're sticking to it. Yeah. And your intentions are there and you're ready to go. Holidays are great, but it's it's nice to get back into a routine, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The It's just kind of like in limbo, like especially the week we're currently in yeah. as we record this between Christmas and New Year's. It's just like you don't know what day it is. You're not like kind of doing your normal thing. You've eaten a lot of junk food. <laughs> There's no sense of time, you know, like you just wake up and you're like, okay, what do we have to do today? Like, do we have anything scheduled? Do we have to be somewhere at a certain time? It's just very weird. It's very weird. But, oh, well, nonetheless. What are we going to talk about today? We are diving into how our relationship has changed since we stopped drinking. Yeah. And a lot of it will be um, more of kind of my journey, kind of the person that um, was the partner on like the other side of um, of drinking. Um, not to say that I I didn't, but I feel like more so once we had the kids, uh, my my drinking slowed way down. And like we had said, I had taken you know several long. Um, stints without drinking um between you know another pregnancy um just my own you know uh journey of of getting to know myself things like that that um I had went long periods of time without drinking and it wasn't um it wasn't something that you had kind of dove into so it's kind of more so being um the person like the recipient of you know um the recipient of somebody who's continuing to drink in a relationship yeah, and how that kind of, you know, affects the relationship and affects everyday life. Yeah. I mean, full disclaimer here, this may not be an episode relatable to everyone. Um, You know, if there are people listening who are, um, you know, in a marriage where our relationship where, you know, one person may drink more than the other and that has caused friction, um, this is going to be right up your alley. And even if not, I think, um, you know, it is relatable in a certain sense because, um, you know, I think a lot of people have maybe dealt with somebody who, you know, drinks um, and and has, uh, you know, caused um, issues or problems um, for other people. Um, So, yeah, I think the first episode especially was more from my perspective, Um, you know, kind of, I mean, we, we talked about our journey and quitting, but it was, it was more like, you know, I, my drinking became an issue for us. Um, and again, not that I was, you know, drinking all the time, but the, the times that I did go drink, um, I would drink too much and obviously, you know, led us down a path to where we are now, um, deciding that we, we needed to stop. But Mm -hmm. I think it was more so Adam needs to stop (laughs) more than, than Leslie. Yeah. 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 Cause when we made that decision, I was kind of like, I'm down. Like, I'll stop yesterday. It, yeah, it doesn't matter to me. And I, interestingly, though, I've kind of had these conversations with a lot of women that I work with, too. Um, they kind of, um, they really related to, um, especially the last conversation that we had about drinking. And they were just like, yes, I, I totally relate to everything that's going on inside of your relationship. Because, again, it wasn't to the point of, you know, their husbands not going into work and and not doing you know their responsibilities and not not doing that stuff but it was just the like the little things that kind of got lost in their relationship because of alcohol um that were very relatable from our relationship to theirs yeah and i think a lot of times people just don't understand um the perspective of the other person right like yeah. you don't realize what you're doing how big of an impact it has on your on your partner yeah. um, until you actually sit down and talk about it and maybe things like this you know listen to a podcast about you know a, a couple talk about their struggles with alcohol in their marriage um, you know will open up some dialogue between you know another couple like hey you know what I've been meaning to talk to you about this um, or, or maybe if you know they're in my situation like 
kind of that light bulb moment, like, oh my gosh, has this been, you know, how my wife is feeling when I go drink? Um, because again, if you don't really stop and think about it, you might just be oblivious to it all. Well, yeah. And, and that's for multiple reasons, right? Because you don't want to, you don't want to stop because you enjoy drinking or, or whatever habit it is that's causing that friction. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to give that up. And it's kind of a, um, you know, an egotistical way to look at it of like, I don't want to change my life. Sorry that that's, you know, making you feel the way that it does, but it kind of puts it onto your partner. Sorry, it's making you feel that way. Um, I have nothing to do with it. You know, I'm still being dad. I'm still showing up for work. I'm still bringing home a paycheck. Sorry that you feel that way um, until you kind of step back and you have that hindsight, that 2020 vision, and then you can really begin to uh, kind of um, connect the dots of like, oh, like you said, that's how she felt. I get that now. I understand that now, but it's only through kind of clear eyes and for a sustained amount of time, you know, to, to be able to get that perspective. And what's the first thing sometimes people feel like when uh, their spouse brings up something about their behavior, they feel attacked, yeah, right? You get defensive. They, they, you get very defensive. Well, I, I'm not that, but you, you, sh- you think I'm bad. You should see other people, uh-huh. you know, you start comparing yourself. Yeah. Um, and I did that in, you know, very, you know, probably up until <laughs> this year, um, I would always try to defend it. You know, like I, like you've already mentioned, I still show up for things. I'm, st- you know, I'm still present. Uh, as we've talked about, I wasn't fully present. Um, but you know, I, I didn't realize how big of an impact it was having. Um, and I, I didn't want to change my ways. Like you said, I was just like, you know, th- th- she's overreacting. Um, you know, there's so many things that I bring to this marriage. Well, you know, why can't she let me have my one night out every so often? And yeah, maybe I do get, um, you know, intoxicated and, and maybe I'm not, you know, fully present the next day or, or what, but that's, you know, one time every, you know, a couple months or whatever, you know, justification I tried to make for myself. Um, but yeah, you do get defensive and that's obviously not a great approach because then you didn't want to have that conversation anymore because you knew how it was going to end up. Yeah. It would basically end up me listing all the things that I was disappointed about and making my case to you. And you would just kind of sit there very stoic and um, straight faced and you would apologize, but it was never a sincere apology. That's how I felt. It was never a sincere apology. It was just like, I'm sorry for ruining this day, but not a deep, sincere, like, I want to do better. I don't want this to happen again. It was just like, I'm sorry that I feel like crap and I've wasted this day of my life more so than, you know, the the really um, deep, soulful sorry. You know, you can feel that when people, um, w- when people make those kinds of um, pleas. Yeah, and I think towards the end, I, I did definitely start getting to that point. But again, I, I wasn't... Because we had quite, had that conversation right. over and over and over again. But I wasn't quite ready Mm-mm. to give it up. No. A hundred percent. I was ready to cut back, <laughs> you know, on those nights out or, or try to say, well, I'm only going to go out for a couple and, we, you know, we, we know how that ends mm-hmm. up, but... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, you want to dive into kind of the first way it changed, like because I we've already been talking about just like the yeah, like the I think for me the biggest um, the the biggest uh, change since we stopped drinking was um, there's more trust in our relationship. Um, I can remember times when um, you would call and you'd be like, "Hey, uh, you know, so and so wants to go out. Um, do you care?" And um, we don't have a relationship where it's like, "No, you can't do that." you know, like, that's just not us. And so I typically was like, sure. But it was also met with um, a lot of passive aggressiveness. <laughs> I'm sure you picked up on that. Um, a lot of like, for me, it was a visceral reaction. Like I could feel it in my body, this um, kind of like fear and worry and doubt. And I knew what the next 
um, 36 hours were going to look like. I knew there was going to be disappointment. I knew that there was going to be um, that you would break my trust. You would try hard not to, but you you absolutely would because I would say yes, but remember I would list off all the responsibilities that we have the next day. We have to do this and this and this and this. Um, and I need you for yada, yada, yada. And um, inevitably, um, I would be met the next morning of, you know, you being hungover and unable to get out of bed and having a pounding headache. And it just was nothing would get done. And then I would be so angry and so frustrated and we wouldn't talk. And then when we did talk, you know, I would get emotional and I would, you know, tell you all the reasons why I was so frustrated. And again, it was just that stoic, you know, I'm sorry. Um, it was just, and then having that repeated over and over again for years. I mean, I think we did that for years. And there were so many times, probably over the last two years, where I said, I'm not having this conversation again. This is the last time that I'm having this conversation. I probably said that. I couldn't tell you how many times. And then in April was when I said, I'm not, I'm not doing this. It was kind of like I found my self-worth because in the past, I felt like I, I didn't, I, I wasn't aware of how little self-worthiness I had. And so I felt like I was just trapped in this um a cycle of of poor behavior and then you know having to reprimand you and then doing it over and over and over again but um you know I did so much work on myself and I realized I have a choice in this situation I can choose to step out of this I don't have to stay in this do I want to absolutely I love you and I want to do life with you forever and ever and ever but I, I do have, I do love myself and I can choose to live this way or not live this way. And that's up to me. And so that last conversation that we had, I said, you know, you can do whatever you want. The choice is yours 100%. However, I do have a plan for the next time that this happens. And you said, oh, I assure you, you know, it's not going to happen again. And at that time, I had heard that. I had heard that so many times and I had very, very little trust in you. And I was like, okay, that's fantastic. I'm, I hope that this doesn't happen again. However, I do have a plan in place. So when this does happen, this will transpire. And I don't know if that was a light bulb moment for you. I don't know if, if that was what hit you um, kind of between the eyes of like, mm, maybe she's not screwing around this time. Um, but it was the, like the lack of trust that I had for you that I didn't even really realize until I had that conversation with you. Um, and it not lack of trust as in like Adam won't do what he says he will, because in all other areas in our life, I knew I could count on you. Like if you said you were going to be somewhere, you were going to be somewhere. If you said you were going to do something, you would do something. That was always the case. But that one instance, every two weeks, every month, every couple of months, depending on what happened or when you wanted to go out, it was like this little like pebble in your shoe and it would just get lodged in there and it would stay in there. And then over a course of time, all of a sudden you kind of realize you're walking on nothing but rocks in your shoes because there's so many pebbles from the small times that there was a, a, br a break in the trust. And it was kind of like that. It was like uh, it dawned on me that, holy crap, there's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking in discomfort and it's not me, it's him doing it. And I have agency and I have the ability to um, move and, and do and change. And so I'm going to do that. But um, the trust was so... Um, it, it was it was pivotal to change that in our relationship. I felt like if we were going to succeed, um, I don't know what your <laughs> thoughts on that are. Uh, no, I mean, I, I knew that you didn't trust me when I would go out towards the end there. And that's why I was 
so hesitant sometimes to even ask. And I do remember there were times where I'm like, okay, like I'm going to, you know, quote, be good. And, and I would be okay. And, but then, yeah. you know, and inevitably, like you said, there would be that, that night that I would just, it would get out of hand. And I think I, I wrote in a, a blog post, like, um, you know, I feel like I'm pretty, pretty intelligent, pretty responsible for the most part. But once I had alcohol in front of me, like all that went out the window. And we know it's because, you know, as soon as you start drinking, your your brain changes, right? Your your judgment lapses. Um, there's all sorts of you know things that happen. And no matter what I thought going into that night, once I drank the alcohol, it was your like, plan is who gone. cares? You yeah. know, like I'm having fun. I'm being your prefrontal cortex is now taking a nap and your brainstem is like, eh, let's do it. <laughs> not who cares, but you're just not thinking you're clearly. Not. You're not, you know, you're no longer, you're, no, you're not thinking yourself. of the next day. You're yeah. in the moment yeah. and you're like, this feels good. Yeah. I'm having fun with my friends. Why is this a bad thing? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you keep drinking and, and before you know it, you've passed that line, which, you know, unfortunately is very easy to do. Um, and so, you know, I think the you don't want to blame it on the alcohol, though, because, mm-hmm. yes, it, it, the alcohol is making those um, things happen. And Brain but, changes. Yeah, but you are ultimately the one who's putting the alcohol into your body. Um, and I know that we talked about many times you're like, you know, um, you got to choose, you got to choose like, you know, do you, do you want your, your nights out? Um, or do you want, you know, this family? And I, I of course, a hundred times out of a hundred, if you ask me that when, when I'm not drinking, I'm going to say, I, I, it's no brainer. I choose you guys. Um, but my actions were, were saying otherwise when I would go out because the next day, you know, I was non-existent. Um, I remember one day in particular, like you guys brought home like a whole crew from the park and then there's just like people in our house that I don't know and everybody's being loud and I'm like stuck in the you know in our bedroom and I don't even want to come out to go to the bathroom or anything um because I can hear everybody strategically done (laughs) strategically done but you know it it it, it was kind of that was an eye-opening moment because I'm like you know she's not messing around (laughs) like this is (laughs) And then it gets to the point where, like, in your marriage, like, that's the underhanded stuff that I absolutely yeah. hated. I did not, I didn't want to do that. That does not feel good. That's not honorable. That's not who we are. And it, it, it hit me to, like, my off after- enough times. And <laughs> yeah. You, even someone you who's understanding me. and loving. Right. Yeah. You put me into a corner enough and I'm gonna eventually have to defend. But like you said earlier, you know, we've never been the couple that, you know, the, the wife tells the husband what to do. And you, yeah, you can, because we've always said that that feels like a, a parent, you know, child, child relationship. relationship. Like, I'm an adult, you're an adult, like we can make our own choices, but you hope that the choices that your spouse makes are ones that, you know, are respectful of the other and and benefit, you know, their relationship. And and clearly those decisions I was making were not. Um, But yeah, I I just, I remember like texting you like, oh, I don't want to text her, but I need to ask her if I can, and, you know. I would say, hey, can, can, can I go out with my friends tonight? And your responses were, again, you weren't saying no, but it was like very clear that you yes, were not but... happy with that <laughs> because you just kind of knew yeah. what to expect. Or um, you had kind of touched on this before of sometimes you would go out and you would be absolutely fine. And then other times it would be just, you know, a, a day of hangover the next. And um, I think uh, especially... Um, I don't, maybe it was towards the end, but the volatility of that, of not knowing what I'm going to get in the morning was like the most uh, depleting thing of like not knowing one, what time you're going to come home because I don't sleep well until you're home and safe. So I have a poor night sleeping. And then two, I don't know what kind of atom I'm getting the next morning. Like, are you, am I going to be mad? Am I going to be angry? Am I going to be pleasantly surprised? Am I, you know, it felt like I was 
handing over my emotional stability to you. And it was on a very uh, shaky foundation. And I, man, that was... That it was, was a rough. guessing game. It was a it was a big guessing game. But the way it's changed now that we uh, don't drink is that that trust is back. I can not that I go out very often anymore without you, mm-hmm. but there there have been a few times yeah. where I've been invited to go somewhere and you know we can't get a babysitter or whatever the case is, and I say, hey, do you mind if I go out with you know these people tonight? And you're like, absolutely, do it. Mm-hmm. And, and and, uh, Almost like I- encouraging, like the last time you went out with Josh, I was like, no, go have fun. Enjoy. I hope you guys have a great time and have good conversation. And I was just like, yes, go and experience mm-hmm. and do. And, and just knowing that you have you know, nothing to worry about because yes. I'm not going to drink. I'm going to be, um, you know, I, I stayed out a little bit later than I probably <laughs> wanted to, but. Um, which is hard to do when you're not, you know, it, it gets really hard to stay out late when you're not drinking. Yeah. Um, that body just, you know, tells you, Hey, it's time to go to sleep. Whereas when you're drinking alcohol, you, your senses are dulled and you just ignore that, that tiredness because you're, you're out drinking. Yeah. But, um, you know, it was, it was very, um, I don't know what the word I'm searching for, but it was, it was just, uh, not proud, a proud moment, but that's what I'll go with. It was a proud moment when I like came home and, you know, I w- walked into the house after driving myself home, not having to worry you know, about get somebody else somebody. taking me or whatever. And, you know, being able to have a conversation with you because I was like, hey, you know, and, and you asked, how was your night? And I tell you about it. And it's it's not dreading going home anymore. <laughs> it's, hey, I'm I'm excited to go home and tell, huh. you know, tell Leslie about my night. Um, it raises your self-esteem, too. And maybe that's something that you never even were able to notice that like that takes a toll on your self-esteem of, of coming home and just being like, man, I messed up again. She's going to be angry with me. This sucks. Now I have to do tomorrow. I'm going to feel like crap, you know, and you don't have to worry about that anymore. But I think the, the important thing to, to note here is that by me doing this, it's not because you are forcing me to do it. Like, Hey, you know, if you don't change your ways, well, I'm out of here type of thing. Like, you know, I think it's hard for some people to understand why, like where others are coming from. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand why she feels this way, but you know, I'm just going to do this to make her happy, blah, blah, blah. But for, for this situation, it was like, this changed my life. Like it wasn't just, you know, I'm doing this to, to make less happy. After I stopped drinking it, like, just opened my eyes to what I had been missing out on and how different my life is now that I don't drink alcohol. And I, I know it's something you can't really um, fathom when you're, when you're in the moment drinking, you know, you're still in that, um, that place. But once you stop drinking and, and, you know, you have some perspective, you look back and you just realize you were selling yourself short. Like you yeah. were not, you are not um, allowing yourself to be the person that you really are or can be because, you know, alcohol just completely um, changes who you are. I mean, no, there's really no other way to say that. Alcohol makes you a different person. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether that's you have one drink every so often, like it, it alters your, your brain and your state of mind. So I, I really just don't think that you can um, really... I don't know, personally speaking, I don't think I could have ever, um, you know, gotten to the, the place that I might not at now. And, and I still have a long ways to go, obviously, but I just don't think there's any way I could have done that while, while drinking. Um, it was, it was like a chain, you know, just mm-hmm. kind of holding me in one place, um, and not allowing me to kind of, um, continue on in life. Yeah. It was kind of like in, um, 2018 when, uh, I, it, just kind of hit my rock bottom emotionally and whatnot and uh, went to my surrender moment of just like, I got to change. Something's got to be different. I can't do life this way anymore. And it really didn't have anything to do with alcohol. Mine was more of like trauma and emotional dysregulation and things like that. But that's what was, uh, that's what was filling me up. I didn't really have the capacity for life. However, I knew deep inside of me, I had to stop drinking 
because I could not um, figure out my my everything, right? Like who I was. I wasn't able to heal trauma. There's no way I could do any of that stuff in conjunction with alcohol. And this is, you know, years before we made, you know, this decision to change. That was just this feeling deep inside of me. And I remember coming to you and just being like, hey, I'm, I'm not drinking and I don't know when I'll drink again, but um, this is something that I have to do. And you were just kind of like, okay, yeah, cool. You do you, whatever you need to do. Um, but I, I also kind of always felt this um, kind of like um, small pressure of like, well, when are you, when are you going to start drinking again? When are you going to start drinking again? Because I remember when we went to Texas for family vacation, you were like, do you think that you're going to drink when we're on vacation? You think, cause you know, we're going to go to the beach and you know, probably just have some fun and stuff like that. And I felt so much pressure that I gave into that. And I had sustained like 10 months, um, without drinking and I had made some big strides in my, um, healing journey. But I think to myself, man, um, how much more could I have done if I had just stuck to my guns, had more self-worth and said, no, I love myself. I honor myself. This is a decision that I made and I'm going to go forward with. It. And that just goes back to what we've talked about before. When you are not in a good place yourself yeah. w- with your relationship with alcohol, when others yeah. around you are not drinking, um, makes you, you, you makes you uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I, because I was, you know, I was naive. I, I thought that you had to drink to have those fun moments. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've talked about all this before, but yeah, it, it, I, I, I do remember kind of, uh, you know, saying I, I'm okay with you not drinking, obviously, like that's your choice. But I, you know, associated us drinking with a lot of, quote, fun moments mm-hmm. and, and especially, you know, taking trips, you know, <laughs> we, we, Talked about that too. We we drank a lot on our trips. Yeah. Um, our trips pretty much revolved around alcohol. Um, so yeah, there was that little disappointment because again, my relationship with alcohol was not good. I, I thought I needed it to have fun. Um, that was something. And you like we was, liked to hang out. So you were like, Well, she's not drinking and I'm drinking, like this is gonna be a weird dynamic. Right. Right. That's hard. That's really hard. But next, uh let's dive into kind of more um conversation that we have this podcast would not be made possible if it not weren't for the decision to stop drinking because and we've said it a lot but it's very true there's just no way no we haven't had deep conversations like this in a in a very very long time not saying that we never talked about important things because we did we've we've went through a lot of important things but if we're talking about our relationship, our marriage, um, our own um, habits and things like that, and really calling attention to like, hey, I'm doing this and I know that it's upsetting you and this is something that I need to change. Um, we haven't done that in a very long time. I'm well, not even sure we started our marriage on that kind of foundation. Well, and that just goes back to when you are when you don't trust someone and when you know that you've done things to make them upset Mm -hmm. you kind of avoid conversation i'm talking about me yeah like i knew like what is in pandora's box i knew that that you were upset i didn't want to yeah exactly i didn't want (laughs) to unlock something (laughs) and so you just kind of sweep it under the carpet right you're just like ah you know let's just kind of have that surface level conversation and just kind of um you know get by um, because I know that there are things that we need to address, mm-hmm. um, but I don't want to because it's because going to then, force me to change. Yep. Well, and it's also going to force me to confront things, uh, yeah. my my own doing that we don't like to do. Right. We don't yeah. like to be reminded of the things that we do that people don't like. Right. We want to hear about how great we are. We want to hear <laughs> about how much you love spending time with me and not. Uh, he, we need to talk about the things you do that really just don't make me happy. <laughs> Very, very true. But then once you, once you do go there, right, once you do go deep, once you open that box and once you start unleashing all of that stuff, one, there's freedom in that. There's freedom in knowing like, hey, we're no longer going to have those heart walls. We're going to be totally transparent with each other. But two, 
um, it also unlocks like this level of emotional intimacy that you may have never even known that you were lacking in. Like I didn't realize how much I was um, kind of putting a distance between us, um, how much I was kind of trying to skirt around things or um, just trying to keep myself safe emotionally because I was like, man, if I totally bear everything and he gets defensive and says, you're crazy, I only do this once every, you know, whatever while, um, that is, that's going to kill me. Like emotionally, I could not take that. I was not in a place where I would be able to take such a hit. And that is my empath coming out. Um, I'm very sensitive. Um, so I just knew that I wouldn't be able to take such a hit emotionally. And so, um, yeah, we would just kind of skirt around a lot of things, but all the while knowing like I, I like I miss a deep relationship. I miss who we used to be and I miss, um, I don't know, I guess who we could be because I always saw glimmers of like our relationship being better just because we have good we have good foundations like we're we're kind and we're generous and I mean obviously we have lots of flaws too but um our relationship works well because you know we we love each other and we trust each other and we um um I don't know we've just We've we've put forth some some effort to uh, to make this relationship good, um, but I just knew it could be so much better. And and I I don't know if like a lot of women listening can relate to this, but it's the emotional intimacy that once that makes you or leans you more towards wanting to be physically intimate with your partner. A lot of times, if the emotional intimacy is not there, the physical intimacy is not there either. Well, and, you know, it goes back to what we talked about in a prior episode. You know, it's already hard enough sometimes to have those deep, meaningful conversations because you just get busy with life, right? We talked sure. about you have those kind of mundane, like, how was your day? You know, tell me about work type of conversations. Um, and you're not, you know, you're not necessarily going to sit down you know, at, at, after tell me how you were feeling and, about yeah, and talk about those things. So it's already hard enough to have those conversations mm-hmm. um, when, you know, just get the busyness of life and then throw on top of that, that you have, you know, things that, you know, are between you that you, yeah. you know, a spouse is upset or, or, you know, whatever, and you don't want to tackle that. So now you're really, really not talking much or outside of just, again, those normal conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, you know, goes on and, and the longer you do that, the easier it becomes just to kind of normalize that way of living. And before you know it, it's been months and months and you're like, when was the last time we really had a deep conversation? And, um, but or, again, like, you're, what avoiding, do I even, you're avoiding it though. You, oh, you are. And we're like, what do I even know about him anymore? Like, that's where I got to the point of like, I know you, but like. I don't really know your soul. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know how you feel about life. I don't, I, think, I don't know all I of these so things. so many relationships do get to that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's tough because, you know, if you're talking about a marriage like we have, a man and a woman, we're programmed very differently. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you just kind of touched on that a little bit about, you know, even down to intimacy. You know, guys have maybe a different way of thinking than, than women do. Um, so it is tough because, you know, the way I take something may not be the way you take something and vice versa. So you're already working uh, not against the grain being a, uh, a male and a female, but like you said, very different uh, chemical makeup and things like that. But then also, too, I mean, there's sensitive men out there that I'm sure can relate to what I just said about wanting to have the emotional intimacy with physical intimacy. Um, so then you're you're just talking about different personality traits of uh, of people and coming together. And I, we didn't learn anything about that whenever we were getting married. I didn't learn anything about that of you. I don't 
I didn't know what your love language was. I didn't know what makes you tick. I mean, we had been together for seven years, but seven years was like 17 to 25. I mean, very young years in our life. And I don't think that we took the time to, to really like, I don't know, build a really good foundation and figure out who one another are and what our marriage is going to look like and stuff. And a lot of that stuff, yes, you're going to learn trial by fire and being in the situation. You can't talk anything. Um, you know, you can go over and rehearse scenarios, but until you're truly in it with the emotions and life and everything, you know, it's, it's going to be completely different. However, we didn't even rehearse anything. <laughs> we just kind of were like, hey, we've been together for a really long time. I love you. You love me. I think we should take the next step, <laughs> you know? Um, so maybe had we done um, a little bit more investment in, in each other, then um, things may look different. However, I mean, I think we're in a pretty good spot. Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Let's, uh, let's move on from conversation um and move into uh, a more willingness to try new and difficult things and things that may even be scary um i've watched you become a different human seriously so in you know the last what 8 months it just totally morph into who i always knew you were and uh that's been like super amazing to watch but without the, um, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know what the magic bullet is. I don't know if it's the, the, um, the energy behind um, not uh, having alcohol in your system and feeling terrible and like having that, that reoccurring cycle over and over and over again. Or if it's um, just you realizing your own power inside of you and just being like, Hey, I can tackle whatever I need to tackle. Um, I don't know what it is, but I think that, um, having alcohol out of your life kind of, I think you've said this before, it frees up, a, it freed up a lot of your brain power, right? Cause you were thinking like, am I going to have a drink tonight? Am I not going to have a drink? Well, what am I going to drink? Or um, you know, well, I can only have this many drinks because I have this to do. Like it was just so much calculation and so much energy into something that was not fulfilling whatsoever. And it was actually causing you much more strife. And I think we can all relate to that. But now there's bandwidth to pick up new hobbies. This podcast wouldn't be possible if we were drinking, obviously, because it wouldn't be called <laughs> alcohol free podcast. It would be called let's go get crazy. Right? Let's, exactly. Let's go drink. Um we wouldn't be having these kinds of conversations because we still would be in that very uh you know, quiet, let's just sweep it under the rug, let's not open the box, let's just, you know, keep things surface level and and do the day to day. Um you wouldn't have been able to dive deeper into even like how all this audio works for podcasting like that's not my forte so y'all listening this is adam's realm this is his uh like the way his brain works he can figure this stuff out me i look at it i can't figure it out and i'm like i've lost interest i'm done <laughs> i'm over that so to make all of this possible it's because of you. And that's awesome because my jam is sitting here and having this conversation <laughs> with you. Well, I appreciate you saying all that. But no, I think it really starts back to your journey, though it started years and years and years ago. And I feel like I did pick up little things along the way. It may not have felt like I did, but I just watched you and your progression. Um, you know, not even just not drinking alcohol. I know you've talked a right. lot about just the different things that you've gone through, but um, I feel like I definitely picked up a lot from that. And then the, the catapult for me was obviously giving up alcohol and that kind of opened me up to this whole new world. Um, and you know, for people listening who maybe, um, aren't big drinkers that may not like make sense to you. Um, but mm -hmm. you know, anybody who has had struggles with alcohol, um, will, will kind of understand what I'm saying. If, if you've given it up, um, just you know, even for a few weeks, you just, you notice the changes immediately. And I'm not just talking about, you know, your health, 
Uh, obviously, that plays a big part in it. But yeah, for me, I think it was uh, obviously the alcohol, but then also the the piece losing my job um, twice in the last year. Um, you know, kind of put uh, some things into perspective, um, and uh, just it was kind of a culmination of a lot of things mm-hmm. that that led to what we're doing now. And um, but no, I think it, it definitely starts with you know um, watching you and just seeing your um, maturity over the years and, uh, the, you know, the way you handle certain situations and just trying to take, you know, the pieces of you that I really like and try to apply them to, to my life as well. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's been, uh, like my journey has been amazing and uh, I encourage anybody who is dissatisfied in their life, um, for starting a new year, like let's just hop on that bandwagon to invest in yourself. I think in, um, has our podcast been released? The one that we talked about, uh, like pa- reality verse? No, no. no. Yeah. Okay. So we, we record these way ahead of time. So we have like three or four that we haven't released yet. So it, it gets really hard to remember what we've talked about and if it's out yet and if people have heard it. So <laughs> forgive us if we've said things or referenced podcasts that aren't out yet. But yes. But we did a, a like parenting reality verse, uh, like expectation and i got really really passionate oh, about that, self-care that one will be out it will by the time people listen to this it'll be out okay Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway we're new at this <laughs> uh i am a huge advocate for self-care and i'm not talking about the surface level self-care of like you know the bubble baths and the dessert and all of that stuff yes that stuff is nice and wonderful but i'm talking about self-care of like Diving deep and figuring out your childhood trauma, what triggers you, um, how to love and care for yourself, how to find your self worthiness, um, figure out what spiritual path um, you're on, um, if you have one, if there's a different one that could serve you. Um, I'm talking about that kind of self care where you truly, deeply can look in the mirror and say, like, man. I fiercely love you and I respect you and uh, I'm going to try every single day not to disappoint you. Yeah, I think it goes back to the episode we did about relationships. You know, if you are not happy with who you are, mm-hmm. um, you can't expect you can't somebody expect else, your spouse to just make you happy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it does start with self-love. Yeah. Um, because if you are constantly, you know, looking in the mirror and not liking what you see, mm-hmm. Um, and then you're going to have that perception that other people aren't liking what they see right. either when they look at you. Yeah. Um, this is what everybody thinks of me. It's just, yeah, it's a domino effect, but yeah. I think, you know, we've talked about the ways our relationship has changed. Um, once we gave up alcohol and, and some people, like I said in the beginning, this may not be applicable to your life, mm-hmm. but there may be something else that is your alcohol per, yeah. per se, yeah. you know, that, you know, constantly is a struggle between you guys. And, you, you know, it may be something that um, you, you have done what we did. You kind of swept it under the rug. But I, I just encourage you to, to talk about it, but also in a respectful way. Again, mm-hmm. like I was very defensive when you would bring um, my drinking up. Um, and that does nobody any good because it just continues to like drive that wedge between you. Um, and it, I think our pride gets in the way. Like, mm-hmm. it's okay to know that you make mistakes, right? <laughs> we talked about this before. Like, nobody's perfect. Nobody expects you to be perfect. You're going to continue. Like, we, we say we're in a great place now, and we are, but we're going to continue to have arguments. Oops. We're going to continue to have our struggles down the road because that's what a relationship is. Um, you know, there's going to be times where you're kind of on that high, and there's mm-hmm. going to be times where you're kind of you don't feel quite as connected or in in such a good spot as you maybe were, you know, six months ago or a year ago, Mm -hmm. but you know, it's a a work in progress. It's a continual effort. Um, but I think, yeah, it it starts with being able to just communicate and understand, um, each side of the story and not just Mm -hmm. get so focused on defending your actions. And this is why I'm right. You know, I think a lot of times people think relationships and there's all those jokes out there, like, you know, the wife's always right. And, and, you know, we got to let her, let her win this argument or whatever. That's silly. That's, that's nonsense. Like, that's not what a a relationship is. No, no. And if you are 
uh, if your relationship is like that, then you as the one partner, um, you're not truly listening to your wife and or your your other partner. You're you're kind of just like passively sustaining that relationship. And, you know, it's it's really difficult. Um, I had another thought. And again, it just flew right out of my head. It's man. easy to do. It it's is. Easy to do. And I was taking notes, but. We were talking. Take a note. I was like, "No, I'll remember that." We were talking to somebody <laughs> about the podcast, and they said, "You know, you guys kind of flow, and and you never say um or whatever." And we're like, "Yeah, we do all the time." <laughs> Wait until we have no idea what to say. Yeah. But but I think we have kind of found a groove. I, I feel like as we've started to do this, we're mm-hmm. still nowhere near um, some of the you know professional podcasters out no, there. No, no. Um, but it, this is a lot more difficult than than we ever thought it mm-hmm. was. It's not easy to just sit down and have a conversation. I mean, we are married for 12 years and we have conversations all the time, but and there's nobody in the room with us, but you put microphones in front of you and you record something and you know that there are people that will be listening. listening. And it, it does change the conversation a little oh, bit. It does, you know, it, yeah. it's, I'm not saying it makes you nervous, but it definitely it makes me you, nervous. <laughs> you think about the the things that you say, you kind of um, because you're opening yourself up and we've, sure. we've really opened up in this this episode. Um, but I think, again, if even if there's just one person out there that can relate to this um, and maybe this is helpful to them, that's really what we're trying to do here. We, we try to share our experiences and mm-hmm. our journey. Um, in hopes that people maybe don't have to go to quite the extremes that we've had to go through. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that uh, like our uh, our story is very relatable. It's not the, like we said, ends of the earth kind of going like way off the deep end. It's just your everyday kind of suburban lifestyle that we yeah, have we were, all we been like pretty, hypnotized pretty average normal people yeah but yeah you've been like hypnotized by society that like this is normal right this is what year 12 of marriage should look like you know you're mad at her for this and he's mad at you for that and you know like we just kind of bought in and just became uh you know just zombies to everyday life and it it really sucked (laughs) so i'm so thankful that you know like the veil has been lifted and you know we're able to see things a little bit more clearly um it's been it's been really really helpful not just the no alcohol part that's a piece of the puzzle that's just one small piece yeah yeah, exactly but you know you've got to do you still got to put in the effort you got to do just by giving up alcohol doesn't mean you're all all of a sudden going to be this new person and yeah you you still have to put the effort you do you have to put the effort in to put the effort in day after day after day yeah into your never finished yeah into your relationship the two of you and also in addition to yourself and i would say start with yourself first like if you feel like your partner is drinking too much or that, you know, you don't like the volatility in the relationship, whatever it is, you start with you. You get yourself right and figure your stuff out. And then, you know, then you can lead say, by example, exactly, right? you lead by example. And then you can say, hey, this is where I am. Um, if you don't want to do life like that, that is that is completely understandable. I get that. Um, but I love myself enough to say, this is where I am. This is how I want to lead my life. And I would love for you to, but if you don't yeah. want to, that's okay as well. Ultimately it's up to them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much for sharing all that. I mean, <laughs> we, again, we got deep and this yeah. is stuff that we wouldn't like just probably sit down and have a conversation with a stranger about, but essentially that's <laughs> what we're doing by doing this. But again, we just hope that there's people out there that can relate to this and that hope it's so. helpful to them. Yeah. Um, that's really our goal here. And it's also therapeutic for us. So thank you for listening. Yeah. And if you guys want to reach out, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you can relate to anything that we've said, um, please, we'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. We also at this point have a website. Yay. (laughs) I'll be posting online probably before this episode even airs. Um, that uh the link to our website and um we have blogs up there that we're continually trying to work on um and just kind of give you further insight into our journey and hopefully things that are relatable so all right well thanks so much for listening as always we really appreciate you guys and we hope you have a wonderful day see you later